Hello and welcome back to the channel. On this video we're going to look at the Pi PF8 radio again. We're going to look in more detail at how my progress is going with the reconstruction of this classic radio as I've been modelling it in 3D and taking apart a modern radio to use the innards to replace the innards that were once in this old classic vintage set. We're going to be making a brand new radio. If you haven't already watched episode 1, go back and do that now before you watch this episode. You'll see the progress I'm making in making this classic radio come back to life from the dead. We're going to build this radio up from 3D to CNC machine to perfection. So keep watching. Like I said, all we need is a new radio, a gun, and some booze. What could possibly go wrong? Another action-packed intro. I thought uh, you'd might like that. <laughs> right, I thought I'd keep you up to date with what's going on. I've got a bit more progress on the 3D modeling side. As you can see here, I printed off a teeny little version of the radio as modeled in 3D. And uh, it's almost there now. I've got some tweaks to do with regards to holding the innards. And this is what I'm about to show you now, which is the Thastone V77. This is going to be the radio that we're going to use as the donor radio that will be no donating the electrical innards of the new PF8. Now these are very very cheap radios before anyone uh, has a pop at me for doing what I'm about to do. Uh, these are £10 uh, ordered in from AliExpress so I'll, I'll leave a link in the description to these if you want to get some. I bought a box of four over uh, delivered from uh, from China for £40. So uh, an inexpensive radio and a fantastic uh, radio for, for use for these type of things. Now okay, uh, one person's contacted me to say why am I doing this? Well why do we do anything? <laughs> you know, it's, tough question why not hey it's good fun and uh, also I like the fact that we can bring something back that's been long uh, long uh, you know I think most of these ended up in landfill sites most of the original Pi PF8s so anyway um, I really want to do this it's something that's sort of driving but it is taking the time and I've been honing my skills on the 3d printing and the 3d design uh, I chose this Zastone because it's it's a really small form factor. It's not the smallest, um, but it, uh, but it will equally be uh, probably similar in terms of radio performance to the original radio. So th these are uh, by by no means very well sealed. They're held together with about six different screws and are fairly straightforward to take apart. This, um, this V77 has a fixed antenna in it and it runs off of one uh, 18650 that is cell there that you saw and if you've watched some of my previous videos you'll see the charger base I made so you'll know all about that. Um, this uh, circuit board is nice and condensed it's got the uh, the volume uh, on off uh, adjuster there. Um, a little bit concerned about how they shroud these uh, these terminals on the back of the battery there very close to the PCB on the underside it's a little bit of a concern not the best made radio internally but I suppose what do you expect for £10 and you can see the antenna there just fixed up inside the rubber tube um, a single speaker there and just underneath it on the board you might just notice the um, electret microphone there at first I did wonder whether they were using the speaker as a microphone but you can clearly see the uh, the electret uh, is under there the condenser mic so just roughly snipping off these to get the shell out of the way and uh, we'll see what we can do with this PCB. I've not really looked closely at this yet and I thought I'd better start to um, to get the, the PCB into the model. You can see where the, the microphone sits there in the base. I thought I'd get the uh, the PCB into the model so we can actually get moving and actually get some uh, progress with this because quite a few people have asked so I thought I'd uh, I'd, uh, I'd actually drop back onto it and uh, start to put some uh, some more effort into uh, getting it sorted. It took quite a long a long time doing this as you can probably imagine because um, I'm not uh, I'm, I have no uh, experience in 3D modeling so that's where all the time has gone in learning that. So anyway, yes, this, I mean, hard to believe that they can make this for £10, isn't it, really, when you look at the complexity and the all of the uh, controls that are on the uh, the board there and the surface mounted components, and particularly when you think this is a 16-channel radio and when you look at what's inside the actual PF8. But then, you know, that radio is 40-odd years old, so I think we're just seeing progress here. Now, there's the um, the helical antenna, which is up inside the... Uh, the fixed plastic antenna casing there you can see this isn't any great shakes so it was uh, it was quite nice to get the radio separated from the case so I can really see what I'm going to do with this um, there are a number of options I've got with regards to charging which I, I shall look at in a little while but that potentiometer can easily be desoldered from the board as can the microphone there and moved up to the top of the case and put in the, the correct place uh, to match the PF8 now you'll notice the old 
PF8 there. Look at the uh, the amount of componentry that's on the board. By comparison, um, but, but I still think you have to say that for its time that was pretty advanced. You know, it was pretty pretty good. Um, they're the channel up down buttons. Not sure I'm going to use them in this model. I might just keep it fixed frequency as per the original radio, uh, and I may well use uh, the other fe the other feature buttons if I can get away with it. I shall see how we go with the design and see how much capacity we've got. If we can fit the channel selection in, I might do. But I'm more concerned in basically getting the volume control set right and the charging uh, through through the base if possible. So getting the uh, the PCB up next to the original case, um, just for reference, you can see that there's definitely going to be enough room to get this inside the, the mock-up. It'll be a little bit tight, but it will go in. And it's then that I noticed the original 18650 battery was a very close fit to the original battery uh, case. So uh, that got me thinking that I could probably incorporate this, including the charging connections, on the uh, on the model. Now the model isn't going to an exact replica of the PF8. That would be far too much uh, to try and get it like that. But it's going to be a very very close uh, replica. That's the whole point of doing this. There's um, no point in trying to copy it exactly because they exist in the in the real world. And I just wanted something that matched it very very closely and uh, and was really just paid homage to to the radio because. In terms of you know UK, UK collectible radios, the PF8 is probably the most collectible radio out there, and certainly one that holds the, the best prices. So, I mean, you can see from this option here, I could use the existing radio case if I wanted. Now, if you've looked at the last video, I have improved a fair bit on this one. I've moved the PTT button up; it was in the wrong place; it was too low, and I've added the little musical note there next to the tone button and I've made a few other adjustments on the internals as well and I've corrected up some of the dimensions I've just got to um, tweak the battery clip a little bit um, that hasn't got the Pi logo on it either but I've got the Pi logo there I've now got the ridges uh, in the top of the radio they were quite a job to do uh, I learned a few things off of uh, some YouTubers on how to do that to actually gouge those ridges in the top of the case so it's all like I say a learning, a learning experience for me because I'm not a like I say, I'm not a 3D designer. I'm a 2D designer. I'm an electrical engineer. So uh, this is all uh, all all come as uh, as quite a uh, a challenge, but a good challenge in that respect. So anyway, um, this is the inside of the case. I'm starting to work on the PTT button. Um, we've got the uh, we've got the side plate now, which will hold the PCB and these little plastic switches, which I ordered off of eBay, which I've modelled up in uh, in 3D there to mount on the side of the uh, of the switch. And these, I, I'll, I'll, I'm just uh, going to place them. I mean, I, may, I might uh, hot glue them in for now, but I'll probably get some fixings fixed to the side plate and get that actually sorted out. But the beauty of working on the CAD and getting everything to scale in 3D means I can actually get all these parts so they fit on the computer before I actually model them. And what I do is print in sections. So here I uh, printed off a section, a very rough and coarse version of the PTT switch, so it prints very quickly. It doesn't have to be very neat. And uh, I can see I need to just uh, get a bit more tighter on the gap there between the switch. But you can see here that once you physically got it in your hand, it's a lot easier to work out mounting positions. So you can just print in sections. It's much easier to, easier to sort of hold on with your fingers and play around and get the right positions for things, such as the switch there. Now, the switch, the spring in it is strong enough that it will actually keep the uh, PTT button in the right place as well, which is good. So I took a, uh, a shot, a photograph of the PCB board, took it into Photoshop and then brought it into uh, Design Spark here and scaled it to the correct size. And then I laid it down flat into the model and there you can see it's actually in, in 3D. So this actually is scale representation of the PCB as, it, as I'm going to position it inside the case. I mean a few other things that I did last week uh, was uh, was this little bracket for Mick? He's really really pleased for this. He can now get his Q music lation in the car, and uh, really really pleased with how this came out. So this is how I've been honing my skills on the 3D side of things. Really really happy w with the outcome of this one. Uh, it nicely fits there in the uh, in the mixed car, and I even managed to fix my watch. So if you have been watching, uh, keep an eye on the channel. There's going to be a lot more coming up uh, on the next episode. Uh, we hope to have a bit more of this, uh, my progress with the iconic PF8 here. As you can see, have it heavy to carry in your pocket. And uh, again, amazing uh, news for Ringway Manchester to get over 10,000 subs. So congratulations to him. If you have been, thanks ever so much for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.